G'day and welcome to another crack edition of the RDFNL footy show. All well, thanks on time to Delivery Solutions. My name's Jenji, I'm joined by Tara Murray. How do you enjoy your break? Watching other footy. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. never stops. There was still EDFL, Ballarat, Bendigo, so quite a, and still a bit of soccer around as well, so sport never stops. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's been fantastic, great time of year, and I uh, had the pleasure of going watching uh, Drew Petrick carve it up. For, uh, for Ballarat against Redan, and that was uh, an intriguing contest. But anyway, we're talking more of what's happening in RDFNL circles, and we'll start off with the first game uh, to kick off this weekend. Uh, we've got Melton Centrals and Macedon. I think Macedon will enter this game as clear favourites, but it sort of depends on which Melton Centrals we've got. They've been competitive in all, all but one of their games, and they're showing against these lower sides they can be quite dominant. It's about taking that next step and being able to compete with these stronger sides for four quarters. So hopefully they can take some of that form from their previous match where they ab- they absolutely smashed Lancefield and had Dylan Wee kick 19 goals. If they can bring some of that form, I think they could test the Cats. Do you think there's a chance on upset here? I think the Cats are still too strong. I think um, they've obviously got a lot of depth in it, and their top players are starting to fire. So we saw that in their most recent match against Romsey. It was all it was the class that rose to the top. So with those guys firing, it is going to be hard for the um, young Melson Central side. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. I think Macedon will just have a little bit too much speed through the midfield, and they've got too many gun forward options, whereas Centrals are quite quite limited. But at the end of the day, it's one of those games where... An upset is. We'd love. It'd be great to see an upset. I, I, I think it'd be fantastic for uh, for local footy to see something like that there, and, and maybe see Centrals um, really fight for that spot and really get that scalp. But I don't think that this is not going to be that game. But I wouldn't be surprised at the same time. Exactly. That's probably the one thing they have missed. They haven't got that scalp. Obviously, they beat Sunbury Kangaroos, who were a finalist to last year, but they're nowhere near the side they were mm. 12 months ago. So that's it. To see them get one of those top sides is what we probably want to see from Melton Centrals. The big match of the round. Uh, we got Tigger's Rest and uh, and Wallen. This is going to be a cracker. It is, exactly. And you've got Wallen, who obviously are coming off beating Rupert's Wood and are sitting a game clear on top of the ladder and undefeated at this stage. Against Digger's Rest, who came off a massive win against Rockbank, but Digger's Rest are yet to get a win against the top sides. They lost to Rupert's Wood, they lost to Macedon, so for the Digger's Rest, it's about trying to get one of those scalps. Obviously, they're still in the mix and still probably a top four or five side, no doubt about that, but they haven't been able to get the points against those top sides. Yeah, well, they've actually, that just just edged out Macedon, um, I think, going back a few weeks ago. Sorry, they did too. But, but, it was a, but it wasn't a convincing sort of style. I think it was a, it was a tough game in that respect, but I, I agree with you. I think they real this this is going to be an important as important game for them as it would be for Wallen because Wallen have got the runs on the board this year taking down Rupo in the last outing and Diggers Rest need to prove that they can beat some of the quality sides. It is and like we said with Rupert's Wood the previous round both of these sides have a lot of depth so that's the strength that we're seeing at this time. Ne- um, I know neither side has been able has had injuries they haven't been able to fill their full side so once they get that out they're going to be stronger and they're two sides that will be around the mix come finals. Wooden Heskett v Sunbury Kangaroos this is an important game here for the Hawks and just as important for the Kangas. It is. Look, I'm expecting the Hawks to get an easy win. They've obviously, um, besides one probably disappointing match against Romsey, they've impressed us. So Mm -hmm. I'd say that Kangaroos need need to improve on what they did in the previous round. They were quite disappointing against Riddle. Didn't kick a goal for three quarters. So obviously injuries and lack of depth is something that has hurt them this year, but that's still no excuse. So if they can get a few players back and and be a little bit more competitive and try and get, get a win against one of these top sides to stay in the mix for finals. Gregory would have been a fantastic inclusion for the Kang is uh, pretty confident, unfortunately, he won't be able to play. But the matchup with him on uh, Tom Gawthrop, uh, two sort of tall players, uh, very well evenly matched. That would have been fantastic to to watch. It is, and I think they've really missed Gregory, not just on the field, but um, with it, how he plays, but also his leadership as well. Mm-hmm. So you have got that having a lot of young players or players who, who have previously played reserves, playing in the senior sides. Losing someone of his leadership is is very crucial for that side. Definitely right there. We're both on the other uh, Hawks bandwagon here. R- Riddle uh, and Lansfield. Lansfield coming in with lacking that confidence after a disappointing outing against the Centrals while the uh, the Bombers, they are flying. They are looking magnificent at the moment. It is. like I, I spoke to Chris Collins after their loss to Melton Centrals and he said for them this season it's not about the scoreboard. It's about making sure they're, they're hitting their own KPIs. And he said that he was happy with how they played for the first half, mm-hmm. but it was a disappointing second half. So for them, it's about just making sure they're doing the small things. Obviously, they're, they're not paying their players this year. They've gone back to basics about trying to get the local feel back to football and making sure that um, they're going to have a club for the long term future so they're starting to build that and from all from all indications that it is starting to what they're looking to do is working they 
I think their side has an average age of 22, 23. Mm. So they have the opportunity to build together. It's just making sure they're competitive. Bombers have probably, they've hit their form the last couple of weeks. They've had two really dominant performances against Romsey and Sunbury, two sides that played finals last year. And they both put, they put them to the sword. So if they could kick straight, they would have had a bit more percentage boost in the last two couple last two weeks as well, but they've, they've really hit their form. Yeah, they're looking really, really good at the moment. Uh, Romsey and Rockbank, Romsey need to bounce back here. Romsey do need to bounce back here. Obviously, they stuck with Macedon for three quarters um, in their previous round, but were smashed by Riddle. So they're probably one side that doesn't quite have that depth that they need to match with some of those top sides. So obviously, playing one of their lower sides in Rockbank, you'd expect them to win. But for the Rams, this is an opportunity to step up and um, probably play as, they've played a lot of the top sides in the last few weeks and been smashed to be a bit more competitive and hopefully um, take a lot out of this game. Mm, def- definitely right there. Uh, I, yeah, I think Romsey, for them, I think it's about kicking a, a good high score if they can and find someone, uh, maybe a Jack Jed Wobb if he, he could have a day out or someone else, maybe Ben Way if he's, uh, if he's fully fit to, to stand out because their, their forward line hasn't had the great structure this year that maybe it's had in the past. So I think it's important for them. They're going to kick a, a solid score. They're going to have to find a good focal point or two that's going to be able to lead them beyond this game. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. It's about building this. They're still a pretty young side and mm. they know where they sit that they probably don't quite match it with those top sides. So it's about continuing to build. And you give two, three, four years, if they keep this side together, they'll be a very, very strong unit. How do you feel about Chris Burkett playing forward? It's, uh, it's certainly been an interesting thing he's done this year. Look, anywhere Chris Burkett plays, he sort of... Um, go, turns to gold. I know even on the cricket field, he can bat, he can bowl, he can field. Mm. So he's one of those people. Nowhere, no matter where you have him on a sporting field, he can be dominant. And he's kicked a few bags of goals. Like he, I think he kicked a couple fours early in the season. Yep. So if they've got that midfield depth, that it gives them a different option up forward. Obviously, I know Riddle's done it with Hayden Ross. They've moved him out of the midfield and up forward, and they have had success. So it's something similar like that. Yeah, and I guess we're going to try and find a, a few big positives out of Rock Bank too. They've still got some good young players coming through. Still one of my favourite players to watch whenever I get the chance to watch the Rams in action is uh, is Mitch Baumgartner. He's absolutely outstanding. Great, talented ruck. It is, and obviously you've got his brother Jordan as well, who is quite a talented player. I think mm, won the Steve is. Turner Young Gun um, Award a few years ago. So you've got those couple. You've got Alan Greenwood. You've got Ricky Cameron. There is a lot of young talent in that side. So those guys are sort of taking on the leadership roles, and they're showing week in, week out that they can play against against these guys. They just probably need a little bit more experience around them and a little bit more depth, but they continue to show um, that they are players to watch for the future in the competition. Speaking of players to watch, there's, there's a lot of players to watch over at Rupert's where they do take on Broadford, and I love uh, love the opportunities that, uh, that the club has been able to provide some of the younger players to, uh, to play some senior footy, and we might see a few opportunities here as well in this important game here for the Sharks. You need to bounce back after a loss to Warren. It is. This could get messy. Mm. This could get very, very yeah. messy. So, look, I expect the Sharks to back, bounce back quite easily. You could be looking at a 200-point loss here. I hate saying it, yeah. heading into the match, but you've got, obviously, Broadford, who's struggled all season and hasn't won a game, and then you've got the Sharks, who have just lost one. So, and especially if they get Nick Grigg in there as, um, mm. as another forward option, that sort of gives them um, your key defenders going to Nick Grigg instead of Todd Pottlezak. So imagine what that can do for Todd, who's already been on fire this season. So it could quite get messy. Yeah, well, uh, we won't go into too much there. We Hopefully Broadford uh, can do a fantastic job. Speaking of doing a fantastic job, our friends over at Rupert's Wood uh, TV doing a fantastic job. Loving their uh, loving their work and also sharing their, their shows up on or our shows on their YouTube channel as well. But there's some compulsive viewing down there. It's great to see clubs like that put on a great show. It is, and they get different players involved every week. So it's not just the same player hosting. So you get to learn a, a bit about the personalities of the players in the club as well. So you get to see them on the field, but this is the off-site, off-field sort of thing, and you get to see a little bit different of... Um what these guys do. Exactly. Uh, it's uh, something I love watching every single week and uh, cannot wait to, uh, to check out the next edition. Um, Tara, thanks so much for joining us this week as we uh, we fire up for round eight and uh, in the RDFNL where we'll be approaching the halfway markets coming up really, really quick. And thanks on Time Delivery Solutions and yourself. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with later on. Thanks, Tara.